Monster Hunter Rise has finally released and the people are loving it. There are new maps, new modes, and most importantly, new monsters. Not a day has passed since launch that I haven't played Rise, in no small part due to the amazing additions this game has made to the series. This time around, the world of Monster Hunter has been fit with a feudal Japanese flair, and the newcomers have followed suit, leading to some striking designs with all the thought and talent one would expect. And that thoughtfulness means we can once again head into a scientifically driven deep dive analysis of monster biology, ecology, and this time, mythology. Rise provides a tantalizing smorgasbord of creatures large, small, and endemic, but we must keep our appetite for knowledge in check and only focus on one creature at a time. So today, we'll be taking a gander at the shadiest critter in the series, the feathered frenzy that is the Acnosom. Eat your dongo, sharpen your blades, because the hunt begins now. The Acnosom is classified as a flying bird wyvern, a smaller, bipedal monster capable of flight but lacking the size and power of true wyverns. Acnazom possess a slender abdomen, a long beak, and a wide wingspan, not unlike the body of the common crane. However, upon close inspection, we find that the monster is almost entirely featherless. What appear to be long flight feathers are actually thin keratinous plates. A mixture of reptilian and avian, or even mammalian, traits is commonplace in the Monster Hunter universe, and a monster's composite physiology can tell us a lot about how they live. The Acnosom's lack of feathers or fur would suggest that the bird is most comfortable in a warm climate. Scales suffer from an inability to maintain body heat, and are most often found in cold-blooded species that rely on plentiful sunlight and high standard temperatures. At first blush, this read makes sense. The Acnosom is initially encountered in the Shrine Ruins, a decidedly warm area that hosts lush greenery, due in part to the plentiful sunlight. However, as Rise progresses, players begin running into the Acnosom in the Frozen Islands, a Hokkaido-like landscape full of ice and snow. So the Acnosom may not strictly need a warm habitat, but it might prefer one. What binds these two locales together then? What attracts it to these environments? We can find the answer to that question by answering another. What does the Acnosom eat? Well, meat probably. At that size, it would have to. But to get more granular, the Acnosom is most likely a wading bird. Wading birds are avians that use their long legs to wade into shallow waters where they can find and spear fish with long, sharp beaks. And we can observe this very spearing behavior in some of the attacks the Acnosom uses against hunters. The Acnosom's hunting capabilities go far past the common cranes, though. The aptly named Shady Monster uses its wings in a variety of displays and attacks, but another use of its umbrella-like behavior could be in its diet. The stance taken by the Acnosom is remarkably similar to one used by the real-world Black Heron when hunting. By forming a canopy with its wings while waiting, the Black Heron creates a shady spot that fish flock to. From here, the Heron can pick them off one by one with ease. It's not far-fetched to propose that the Acnosom uses the same method, given their shared physiology and behavior. So then, if the Acnosom rely on bodies of water for food, why aren't they found in the flooded forest? This can be explained by looking at another key feature of the monster, its territorial nature. Acnosom are stated to be highly territorial creatures that use their brightly colored and highly expressive plumage to intimidate and attack other members of their species. The flooded forest consists of primarily deep water and scant high cliffs. Despite its eating habits, Acnosom make their home on solid ground. Less open ground means more territorial spats with other Acnosom. Additionally, the deeper waters of the flooded forest are more beneficial for aquatic creatures like leviathans, and less so for a wading bird that needs plentiful shallows to thrive. This habitat, supporting a high population of large, submerged predators, poses a real threat to the bird wyvern. Thus, the shrine ruins and frozen islands, with their shallow waters and plentiful solid ground, make much better choices for the Acnosom. The direct link between physiology and behavior has taught us a lot so far about this monster, and while a scientifically based analysis is our goal here, it really would be a huge shame if we didn't talk about the mythological influences in the Acnosom's design. Like all new monsters in Rise, the Acnosom's appearance pays homage to a creature from Japanese folklore, specifically a yokai called the Kasa Obake, or quite literally, Umbrella Spirit. The Kasa Obake falls under the wider umbrella term Tsukumogami, a classification for possessed household objects. In Japanese folktales, reaching the age of 100 was an auspicious and superstitious occurrence. It was thought that after a century of existence, the mundane could become fantastic. After 100 years, a cat's tail would split into a fork. The illusory kitsune might grow a new tail and increase its power. And household objects could grow souls of their own and begin to wreak havoc. The Kasa Obake is one of the most famous Tsukumogami, taking the form of a vintage paper umbrella, hopping on a singular leg and sporting one bulging eye and a lolling tongue. The Acnosom is designed to resemble this monster, most prominently in its shady stance, where it props itself upon one leg and splays out its feathers and crest to mock the ribs and webbing of a parasol. 
When raised with the rest of its head crest, the large scale on the Aknazam's forehead resembles the Casa Obake's singular eye, and the bright red coloration on the front of its wings creates a pattern reminiscent of the spirit's drooping tongue. The homage to Japanese myth is quite clever, but we're given no in-universe explanation for the bird's umbrella-mocking behavior. This brings us back to a biologically-centered investigation. We've already posited that the Aknazam may use its wings for hunting, and the game confirms that the crest is also used in territorial disputes as well as fighting. However, there is one more avenue that we haven't explored. Extravagantly plumed birds are far from fantastical. The ever-popular birds of paradise are proof of that. We can look to them, then, for insight into what else these elaborate displays and patterns might be used for. Getting right down to it, the Aknasam's showy crest and dances are probably used in mating displays. Many, many birds use bright colors and excessive frills to attract mates. Brighter colors on males can be used to draw the attention of predators from chicks and hens, while long, heavy, and hard-to-maintain growths like the peacock's tail prove that a given male has ample access to resources. All desirable traits in the animal kingdom. So that explains the giant head crest and the bright patterns, but what about the whole one leg thing? Well, we can assume the behavior is a holdover from the Aknazam's mating displays, but there are some other possible explanations we could explore. If we look, we can find the same action in some real-world fowl, specifically the pretty pink flamingo, another wading bird that's well known for its unipedal tendencies. While no theory has been 100% proven, recent research has found evidence of temperature control as the main reason for the flamingo's famous stance. As a species that is evolutionarily suited for a tropical climate, a high internal body temperature must be maintained to keep a flamingo happy and healthy. However, flamingo, like the Aknasam, persist on a diet of fish and other aquatic creatures. In short, they're wading birds. So they spend a huge amount of time standing in shallow water. This poses a threat to the animal's homeostasis, as submerging any part of yourself is an easy way to lose body heat fast. So standing on one leg is a compromise. It cuts the amount of contact with water in half, keeping the birds nice and cozy. Now, there is one hole with this theory. The Aknasam tends to jump onto one leg as part of its display of aggression. One might expect this to be preparation for bullet-fast kick attacks, akin to the strike of a secretary bird. But the Aknasam very rarely uses its talons in combat. This behavior has to be something else. Well, there is a secondary theory for the flamingo stance. Some researchers have proposed that the bird's famous posture provides a better balance by focusing the animal's center of gravity along a singular axis. If we take this theory to be true and apply it to the Aknazam, standing on a single leg provides better balance, which would be quite important for the sweeping, swirling wing attacks they often perform. So far, we've learned about the Aknazam's diet, habitat, and even mating habits. But there is one more behavior we can theorize on. It's flaming breath weapon. Well. Breath weapon isn't really the right word, it's not how I would describe this. Unlike the fiery torrents unleashed by the likes of Rathalos and Baserios, the Aknasam coughs up neatly rounded balls of fire when agitated. And make no mistake, these aren't just fireballs as in short bursts of pure flame. They're too different, too spherical, and they possess an almost bouncy quality in how they move. I'm of the belief that these are actually physical masses of debris that have been lit on fire. Now, it's common for animals, avians in particular, to regurgitate pieces of their prey that they can't easily digest. Owls, for example, cough up the hair and bones of their meals in compact pellets on the nightly. I would like to propose that the Aknazam is doing the same sort of thing when it attacks. Any chitinous or bony bits that can't be digested are naturally compacted into tight wads in the monster's stomach. While there, they become saturated in a flammable mucus, and can then be lit on fire by friction with a flint-like growth in the Aknazam's neck or beak. That last part might sound like a bit of a stretch, but proposing realistic fire-breathing mechanics is a bit tricky, so I'd like to save that discussion for a video covering a creature that relies more heavily on a breath weapon. With that, we've explored just about every inch of the Aknazam. This is a wading bird that makes its home primarily in warmer climates with plentiful shallow waters where it can feed on fish and invertebrates. It's a territorial creature that uses its crest and coloration to fend off intruders or impress mates, and it utilizes the indigestible pieces of its meals, as well as its hard, plated wings to attack. The Aknazam's similarities to cranes and avians in general set it apart from many other wyverns in the series, while also adding to the pure elegance of the monster. Add on to that the absolutely inspired homage it pays to classical Japanese mythology with its design, and you've got a top-tier new monster on your hands.
The Acnizom is one of the first new monsters we see in Rise, and it more than earns that honor. It's not the most monstrous or powerful, but it introduces us to new life in Rise with ghoulish style and fiery flair, making it an excellent and memorable creature while still maintaining ecological sense upon scrutiny. And that's what I would call putting your best foot forward. Well, he's frills ain't for just attracting mates. Thank you so much for once again enabling my need to apply science to cool dragon monsters. This channel's been overdue for some Monster Hunter content, and Rise releasing was the perfect excuse to get started. Fun fact, I actually began writing this script the day after Rise came out. The Acnazom is just that fun. Anywho, if you have any feedback or theories of your own, drop us a comment down below. And for more videos like this one, you can subscribe to the Digital Dream Club here on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at DigiDreamClub. Thanks for watching, and happy hunting!